Hey everyone, earlier this morning I bent some ebony binding strips. I have them in the back room over there in the side bending machines. That's how I bend my binding strips as well as my sides. So we're gonna go take a look at those and I'll go over just some uh, interesting tips about bending wood bindings. Let's go check it out. Okay, so uh, welcome to the cave back here. It is super dark right now because this, the electrical that goes to the lighting is all screwed up, but that's neither here nor there. These are the meat thermometers that I use during the bending process here. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just going to remove the clamps that I have and the waist shoe here and then pull out the uh, spring steel slats and the thermal blanket and ultimately the binding strips so we can look at those and talk about them. All right, so let's take these back out here into the light where we can actually see them. And I'll show you how I organize my binding strips to prep them for bending. Okay, a little bit messy here. All right, so first of all, as you can see, they are wrapped in both aluminum foil and parchment paper, both of which you can get simply at the grocery store. Now, one of the main things I wanna show you here is how, well, first of all, I can fit many strips under one bending mold here. This is actually three full guitars worth of binding strips. And what I do, after I mark out where the waist and the ends of the upper and the lower bout are going to be with my template, I'll then just take two pieces of tape that you can see here and here, and I will tape all of these strips so that they are not quite butted up against each other. I actually don't want them to all be touching each other because if they're rubbing up right against each other, then there's always the chance that they can either uh, overlap on top of each other, which doubles the thickness of it. And if you've done a little side bending, you know that that thickness has to be dialed in just right. So if we have double the thickness here when we go to bend this, for sure it's going to break. So we don't want those pieces overlapping at all or even just rubbing too much against each other. So I always uh, put the piece of tape on there with a little bit of a gap, just a very tiny, gap between each piece. And then having the tape on there really just ensures that throughout the whole process that all of these strips will maintain the same alignment. They're not going to, you know, shift from side to side. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these out into sets here now. Four strips for each guitar. There's one guitar. There's another guitar, and here's the last guitar. Um, and two of these are for the uh, November guitar building class that I have coming up. These are for the two students, and this other set here is for myself on a guitar that I am building the week after the class. Ebony, by the way, is actually a really great wood for getting started with bending wood bindings. Um, it, despite uh, what a lot of people might expect from ebony. It actually is a wood that bends very easily, much like rosewood does. So it's a great candidate for wood bindings, especially if it's your first go at it. 
By the way, I don't soak these woods like you might do with other species. These woods do just fine with just a spritz of water on both the front and the back surface before I put it in the bending machine. Also with this wood, because it takes a bend relatively easily, I don't have to get it as screaming hot as I would get it um, if it were just a different species like mahogany or maple or something like that. I might get it a little bit hotter, but yeah, with the ebony, I mean, uh, as long as you're over 212, it's probably gonna bend just fine. Uh, of course, the point where it, it scorches the wood is way higher than that. So just to be safe, I'll bring this up to like 240 or 260 or something like that. Um, the danger zone is when you start to get close to 300. On some of the more finicky woods, I'll let it get up to like 280 and get real close to that 300 mark. Um, but then I just don't want to, you know, if you're really getting it that hot, you don't want to keep the heat on for that long. You want to uh, do your bend and then get the temperature back down again. And, but also, you know, with this wood, even if you did get it real close to that scorching temperature, it's kind of hard to scorch ebony. I mean, it's already black, but uh, also just these oily, dense woods like this, they just don't scorch the same way that a mahogany would. So anyway, I guess what I'm saying is that ebony really is ideal for binding strips in a lot of ways, and it looks great. Anyway, just a short video for you guys today. I just wanted to give you a couple little notes on, um, and maybe some ideas on what I do, and hence what you can do in your own shop as far as batching out your wooden binding strips. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.